Over the span of a century, the Panama Canal has played a pivotal role in facilitating worldwide commerce. The most efficient route for transporting goods from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific has long been through this canal. However, a potential shift is on the horizon as Mexico gears up to unveil a novel initiative that would rival the Panama Canal. Spanning over 1,000 kilometers, the construction of this megaproject is already underway and is showing significant progress. Join us today as we unveil this controversial megaproject and discuss its implications for global trade. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. Alongside the Suez Canal, the Panama Canal stands as perhaps the most renowned man-made waterway globally. This canal traverses the Isthmus of Panama, serving as the link between North America and South America, bordered by the Atlantic and Pacific on either side. The width of this isthmus spans 65 kilometers, coincidentally mirroring the length of the Panama Canal. In comparison, the Suez Canal boasts nearly triple the length, while the Grand Canal in China is remarkably over 20 times longer. However, what the Panama Canal lacks in sheer size, it compensates for in terms of significance. Prior to its completion, the journey for cargo ships crossing from one side to the other was arduous. Consider a ship departing from Europe with a cargo of goods destined for California. The vessel would need to navigate the extensive route to Chile, pass through the perilous Strait of Magellan, and then proceed northward once again. Even with optimal speed, accomplishing this journey in a few weeks was possible for only the fastest ships, while for most vessels, the time frame stretched into months. Moreover, the route was fraught with danger, given the treacherous storms and unpredictable currents in the Strait of Magellan. In 1902, the United States took initiative to address this challenge by formulating a plan to construct a shipping canal in Central America. This envisioned canal promised to reduce the ship journey from the Atlantic to the Pacific to less than a day, cutting the distance by approximately 12,000 kilometers. The construction of the canal proved to be a formidable task. Laborers had to employ dynamite, drills, and steam-powered shovels to clear over 200 million cubic meters of earth. To compound the difficulties, the laborers found themselves toiling in temperatures exceeding 40 degrees Celsius. The harsh conditions led to the loss of nearly 6,000 lives, attributed not only to heat stroke but also rock slides and occasional tropical diseases, making it an exceptionally challenging project. Furthermore, the engineering hurdles were substantial. There existed an elevation difference of almost 30 meters between the highest and lowest points of the proposed canal. Consequently, the canal's construction necessitated the incorporation of a series of locks and gates to facilitate changes in water elevation. The construction of the Panama Canal incurred a staggering cost of $375 million for the United States, equivalent to roughly $12 billion in today's currency. Despite the myriad challenges, after a decade of dedicated effort, the canal officially opened in August 1914. Presently, more than 10,000 ships navigate the Panama Canal annually, collaborating to transport over half a billion tons of goods. Undoubtedly, the Panama Canal has reshaped the landscape of global trade. As of 2024, this renowned waterway may encounter formidable competition. It's finally time to delve into Mexico's new initiative, the Interoceanic Corridor of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec, or CIIT. In the 19th century, it wasn't just the United States that considered plans to connect the Atlantic and the Pacific. In 1884, José de la Cruz Porfirio Díaz Mori assumed the presidency of Mexico, a formidable figure in the country's history. Díaz, upon assuming power, envisioned to establish a railway linking the Atlantic to the Pacific. Although not widely known, in mid-January 1907, the newly established railway named Tren Interoceanico officially commenced operations. Remarkably, this was seven years ahead of the Panama Canal, and the global trade community swiftly embraced the railway. In the ensuing years, hundreds of thousands of tons of cargo successfully traversed the railway, 
contributing to Mexico's economic prosperity as it assumed a pivotal role in international trade. But upon the inauguration of the Panama Canal in 1914, the majority of shipping companies opted to discontinue using the Mexican railway and transition to the canal. Eventually, the cargo volume transported along the Mexican railway plummeted by a third, and within a year, it dwindled by nearly 80%. With a substantial decline in traffic, the Tren Interoceanico became financially burdensome to maintain, leading to its gradual deterioration. It remained in a state of disrepair for a century until a visionary new president assumed office in Mexico. In 2018, President López Obrador initiated plans to revitalize Mexico's former railway line and establish a contemporary corridor between the Atlantic and the Pacific, a modern contender to the nearby Panama Canal. The ambitious project was officially unveiled a few months later, outlining plans for three primary rail lines. Returning to the CIIT, groundwork commenced in June 2020, involving the clearing of vegetation, removal of old tracks, and installation of new gleaming ones. The comprehensive new railway, incorporating these three main lines, is anticipated to extend over 1,000 kilometers. President López Obrador has demonstrated a resolute commitment to the project. In 2023, he deployed the army to seize control of a section of old railway officially owned by a private company. Subsequently, he proposed compensation to the company, ensuring complete government control over this railway stretch before finalizing any deals. The aim was to avert the risk of the project collapsing due to potential complications with a steadfast private entity. However, this approach has sparked clashes with protesters, including various groups from indigenous communities. Their concerns primarily revolve around the environmental repercussions of the project, as construction activities involve tree removal and impact to local habitats. The CIIT project has not been without controversy. In certain areas, local families have faced forced relocations, adding to the contentious nature of the endeavor. However, the prevailing sentiment in the region suggests that the anticipated benefits will likely outweigh the drawbacks. Many locals believe that the CIIT will bring significant advantages. Some experts even project that the project could generate up to half a million jobs for the local population and attract approximately $50 billion in international investments. This potential economic upswing has the capacity to reshape the country, a prospect that President López Obrador is banking on. In August 2023, one line of the railway achieved official completion. In September of the same year, López Obrador personally traveled on a passenger train across the entire route, covering the journey in less than nine hours, officially quicker than traversing the Panama Canal. Two months later, a few days before Christmas 2023, the first trains commenced operations for the general public, transporting local passengers from the Atlantic coast to the Pacific. The remaining two lines are anticipated to be finalized by the end of 2024. This raises a pretty interesting question, what will happen to the Panama Canal? While some experts speculate that the CIIT could emerge as a more cost-effective and faster option than the current Panama Canal, potentially leading companies to shift their shipping routes, the primary intention behind the Mexican Railway Corridor is not to render the canal obsolete. Rather, the project's proponents have consistently emphasized that the CIIT is designed to complement the existing Panama Canal, not replace it entirely. The Panama Canal, with a capacity to handle up to 4 million cargo containers annually, often finds itself under strain due to increasing demand. The CIIT in this context is envisioned as a supportive component to enhance the overall efficiency and capacity of international trade routes. The Panama Canal faced additional challenges in 2023 when Panama experienced its driest season in recorded history. In a bid to conserve water, authorities opted to limit the canal's operations, as its gates and locks rely on water for functionality, a precious resource deemed too valuable to squander. Consequently, a decision was made to reduce the daily allowance of ships from almost 40 to only 25, 
prompting a frenzied competition among companies bidding millions of dollars to secure a coveted slot. This limitation left other ships stranded, compelled to await their turn to traverse the channel. This situation underscores the potential value of alternatives like the CIIT. By providing an additional route, it could alleviate pressure on the Panama Canal during periods of high demand, offering shipping companies a reliable alternative. A collaborative effort between the Panama Canal and the CIIT could contribute to an upsurge in global trade, facilitating the movement of more goods between the Atlantic and the Pacific. However, looking ahead, the CIIT might encounter its own competition. In 2014, a Chinese businessman endeavored to construct a canal in Nicaragua, envisioning an alternative to the Panama Canal. Unfortunately, when the Chinese stock market crashed in 2015, he had to abandon the project. Nevertheless, the possibility remains that someone could revisit this idea in the future. Additionally, with the potential opening up of the Northwest Passage due to global warming, there is a chance that this historically ice-blocked route could become viable. In recent years, a few ships have successfully navigated this passage, offering another potential alternative for transit from one side of America to the other. The landscape of international trade routes may continue to evolve, introducing new options and considerations in the years to come. What are your thoughts on this new railway corridor? Leave a reply in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.